got hit right now on sound, right? Yeah. Can you fight me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 how good is that now? First of all, let me just say before you talk about that heat. Let me just work them over and let them switch this out here. He's a 37 in the house, he's 32 in the house. Yeah. 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 We have a uh, topic that is very important today to discuss about heat in the kitchens. How city workers is out here working every day before COVID and during COVID, they will be there after COVID, working in hot kitchens. Oh, yeah. That is disgusting, that is unacceptable. So what do you want? We want a permanent fix here. So I'm going to every day, what do you want? Permanent What do you want? Permanent We want a permanent fix for air conditioning, air ventilation. Air quality in all these kitchens, they deserve it. Every day, all day out, they're working all day in this heat. It's unhealthy. It is not good. Unacceptable. We need change. We are prepared to work at SEA, School Construction Authority, to make this happen. They are prepared to work with us. There's no excuse that this can't happen. We're coming to the mayor and a chancellor. This has to happen. This is not an ask. This is not an ask. This is a need. This is a long time need, and it has to happen. Okay, what do we want? Come and change! What do we want? Come and change! All right, so I'm not going to be too long because there are a lot of speakers here. They're going to echo the same words in their own way. All right? But the whole bottom line is safety in the kitchens, health in the kitchens, AC in the kitchens. We need it. We need it and we need it now. All right? One more time. What do we want? What do we want? All right, my EVP, my executive vice president, Donald Nesbitt. Look what she's going to do. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'd like to, as, as President Francois just said, I'd like to thank the elected officials that are standing with us today. Um, it helps when you have friends in government um, who understand that people are not animals. That these workers, if they're named the city, they should be treated that way. Um, this has, as President Francois said, this is not a new problem. When I started in the kitchens, as a cook in 1998, this has been a problem then and every summer, and even in the winter, it is hot in these kitchens. Two weeks ago, we visited a school up in the Bronx, Richard R. Green, and to have a conversation with the workers there, we even needed bottles of water, we needed ice seats, to have a simple conversation with the workers who are about to pass out. This is unacceptable. We need a permanent fix. We need it now. When, what do we want? Yeah. What do we want? Yeah. When do we want it? Yeah. We want it now. This can no longer be acceptable. This can no longer be the norm. We have to make sure that these workers who are treated, um, who are named essential, are treated as essential, and we have to do it now. Again, I think the elected officials who are standing with us today, um, on these issues, they have championed these issues, and we continue. We will continue to work. This fight will not end. Some people say once there is progress, then the fight is just stop. In the words of Malcolm, if you stab me with a nine-inch knife and you pull it out six inches, that is not progress. If you pull it all the way out, that is not progress. It is when the wound begins to heal from where it was started. So we need a permanent fix, no more band-aids. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I want to start with a huge thank you to uh, the president of Local 372, the president of TC37, and the president for all of us. Put up Francois the first. Yeah. 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 A strong leader within the union. And so I just want to talk a little bit about what's going on. So every day, the city is asking 3,400 local 372 workers to go in and make meals for every child, every adult who is currently facing a hunger crisis. With the expiration of that $600, it's only going to get worse. And our lunch workers are making more breakfast, lunches, and even dinners than ever before. So they are asking to do two, three, ten times more than ever before. And while we're standing here today, it is going to be 90 
92 degrees. And the last time it was 92 degrees, I stopped by a school in my district called Julia Richmond Education Complex, where we've been hearing from the workers that it is too hot, that it had reached 135 degrees in the kitchen. Let me repeat that, 135 degrees. That, my friends, is called an OSHA violation. No one should have to work in those conditions. And I just want to expand on something that Donald said about treating our workers like animals. In the New York City Council, we have passed legislation that would protect horses, but we won't protect our workers. And so, Julie Richmond Education Complex, now that we've been there, we showed up with a thermometer, and the day we showed up, they decided to turn off the ovens. And they changed the citywide menu from cooking to, to, uh, to sandwiches, but even then, it was still 10 to 15 degrees warmer in those kitchens, and at Julie Richmond Education Complex, DOE found the money for the ACs. But it's not just about my district. It's about every single school in the city. And the fact that all we need to do is make sure that the ventilation in the kitchen actually works. And so as many of the less workers will tell you, even when the equipment is there, it don't work. The next piece is, if there's windows, we need, even whether or not there's windows, we need to have HVAC and ACs in every kitchen. And this is just as part of coming back to school, but even if we can't come back to school, we will still be using our schools for food distribution and for helping essential workers. And so we need the ACs, we need them now. It's only gonna get hotter this summer, and this is the right thing to do. So I wanna thank the union for their leadership. I wanna ask, I wanna thank all of my colleagues for coming out and saying that the mayor needs to put his money where his mouth is, and it needs to make sure that we have adequate ventilation, we need to follow OSHA, and we need to treat our workers like the humans that they are, and we can't keep treating our workers like animals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, keep it going. What do we want? What do we want? All right, all right. Next up, Council Member Farrell Lewis. Come on, Farrell. Where are you at? Where are you at, Farrell? Come on up there. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Unfortunately, we're here under these circumstances, but we stand here in solidarity and united. Since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, one thing always remained, that our school lunch workers remain reported to work to provide food for food insecure children and their families. I stood with them as they gave out grab-and-go meals to their families in my district. But one thing I know that is not fair, it is not fair to position hard-working New Yorkers that are essential in a position to prepare meals for children in unventilated and unair conditioned facilities. So I stand here with all of my colleagues united, asking, imploring, and demanding DOE and FCA to provide a permanent fix, providing ACs, and ventilation in all of the cafeterias and the kitchens in all of our schools. We don't know what the reopening looks like, but what we do know is that our school lunch workers need the support. So what we need is a permanent fix. Everyone join me, permanent fix. Permanent fix. Permanent fix. Permanent fix. Permanent fix. We cannot do it unless we all stand together with Local 372 to demand that the mayor, DOE, and FCA provide these services. Thank you, Local 372, for your service and support of your All right, keep it going. Permanent fix. What do you want? Permanent fix. What do you want? Permanent fix. All right, next up, council member. Let's get him in the house. Come on, Vanessa. Come on up here. Come on. Good morning, my brothers and sisters from Local 372. Good morning. To all of my colleagues in government who are here, we are grateful for your work. Let me first and foremost recognize that during this pandemic, when thousands of New Yorkers lost their battle to the COVID-19 pandemic, Local 372 members were out in full force. 
serving thousands of meals to our children, families, and individuals every single day. No matter what, Local 372 members were serving meals to so many of our families in need. During this time, when we've seen the greatest of challenges, true leadership will always show its true colors. Leaders in 372, our hard-working school aides and cafeteria workers, a majority of which are hard-working women of color. <laughs> women of color. Women of color are our essential workers. They are the frontline staff that have been serving New Yorkers every single day. Not only do they deserve respect, There is no time like the present as we talk about what September looks like to ensure that the Department of Education and the School Construction Authority and City Hall hear us and hear us loudly. The members of Local 372 deserve better. They deserve our respect. And so we stand here collectively united as one voice with a common purpose to protect the hardworking men and women of DC 37, Local 372. So I, as one council member on behalf of our District 16 and School District 9, which I am so proud, I have worked with 372 and its leadership for the past several months. We have visited our grab and go sites, we visited our rec centers, we've distributed face masks, hand sanitizers. Let's remember when this pandemic first hit, our school crossing guards and cafeteria workers were not given face masks. We were the ones that did. The leadership of the union and all of the elected officials, we did, not anyone else. And now that we are months in, they are finally getting the resources and supplies that they need. But we don't want to be a day late and a dollar short. And every single day that our workers are in those cafeterias in hot conditions, it makes it worse. And so we have to be their voice. We have to be their voice of reason, of opportunity, of fairness, and of respect. And so we want to thank every single worker, every single man and woman who is working every day in the trenches throughout this city, over 400 plus grab and go sites in the city of New York. Our school crossing guards who are making sure our pedestrians are safe, putting their own lives on the line. And so I thank all of you, elected officials, Local 372. Thank you to President Sean D. Francois. God bless you. Thank you to Donald Nesbitt, to Jackie, to the entire team at Local 372. We appreciate you. We salute you. And most of all, we have your back. Local 372, make some noise! Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So the saying goes, if you can't stand the heat, get out, get out, get out of the kitchen. Out of the kitchen. <laughs> well, the members of Local 372, our kitchen uh, uh, staff doesn't have that luxury. They've decided to commit themselves and recommit themselves to serving families that are underserved even while they're in the most uh, ridiculous conditions you could possibly imagine. The temperatures mentioned by my colleagues are not only unconscionable, they should be illegal. So I'm here today to support Sean Francois and Donald Nesbitt to stand with you, to say to the mayor and the administration and the chancellor that our frontline workers, which are predominantly minority, as it was mentioned earlier, have to be treated not only like human beings, not like second-class citizens. The work environment that they're forced to work in should not be happening every single day. So when we think about the idea of not, if you can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen, that is not a mantra that can be used here. 
we have to decide that we are going to be committed even in this pandemic because one of the things the pandemic has illustrated are the inequities in our community, the inequities of our workers, the inequities of our frontline workers in particular, which as was mentioned are primar primarily black women. We have to stand up for the people who stand up for us. It's that simple. Yeah. So what do we want? Permanent fix. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Permanent fix. When do we want it? Now. Thank you so much, Local 372, for always standing for your workers on the front line, demanding from your partners in government to stand with you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, OK, without further ado, keep it going. What do we want? Permanent fix. What do we want? Council member, Council member Weapon, where you at? You here? All right, Weapon, right, come on up. Oh, you know, the workers of Local 372 have been on the front line since the beginning of this pandemic. They are heroes! And how are they be, being treated? Are they being treated like heroes? No. We need justice. And we need a uh, permanent fix. Yes. We need uh, to tell the Department of Education, to tell the mayor, to tell the uh, school construction authority. We need a permanent fix now. Food insecurity, at the beginning of this pandemic, a few months ago, was the number one issue throughout the city. And it was the hardworking men and women of Local 372 that were doing that service, that were on the front lines, that were providing essential meals uh, to those food insecure families. So they are the heroes, and we need to treat them like heroes. What do we need? Perfect. When do we need it? Now! Thank you, Sean Francois. Thank you, Donald Nesbitt, for your leadership and continued leadership for all the people of our city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Yeah. What do we want? Yeah. What do we want? Yeah. 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 What do we want? Yeah. Yeah. All right, send it out. Benjamin, where do you want to go? Come on up. Yeah. 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 Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay. You know, I grew up on 125 Barclay Street. You know, it was the school lunch workers, their dues, that helped my family survive. My mom worked for Local 372 her whole life. And I want to thank Sean D. Francois the first for taking Local 372 into the future. Thank you, Sean, and his entire team. You know, I think it's important to be very clear. I was talking to Kevin Rowley earlier, uh, my friend from the Bronx. You know, when we talk about being progressive, we have got to follow that up with progress. Yes, yes. And one of the things that I think is so important in this period in time that we talk about specific solutions. And so as far as I'm concerned, we need a task force, Brother Sean, yes. that will come out yes. and go to each single school building and look at the conditions in those buildings and provide a specific report to Local 372 and all of us elected officials standing here at Local 372 and outline a solution. Because it's easy to identify the problem. Everyone's, a, everyone's got a PhD in problem identify, identification, right? We all can speak about the problem. 140 degrees, first of all, most of us have no idea what 136 degrees feels like. 92, we have to talk about the pass out, Sean. So, let's not sensationalize the issue. This is a crisis. It's a human crisis, and it requires, requires a progressive government to uh, bring progress. And progress needs to be specific. And so that's what I'm about. That's what I want to stand with you about. And I'm sure all of us as elected officials will make sure that the city does the right thing here. But we can't keep talking about this year after year after year. Let's have specific solutions. And I believe a task force is a first step in that solution. Thank you. All right, all right. Keep it going, keep it going. Keep it going. I got to go back home and make sure I'm safe. Let me give my shout out to the director. Thank you, director. Here we go. Here you go. Make sure you give me. Let me make sure you guys set that again. Shout out to the boss. Here we go. Here you go. We have all the people that show up here. We have the same thing. The same thing. Don't have to be in the house. Don't have to be in the house. Let me make sure you guys. Who's the one that's in the house? Are you here? You're here. You're here. I know. I know. Keep it going. Keep it going. Let's 
firsthand from their experience about the severity of this issue. Um, like I said, men mentioned earlier, we're treating our animals uh, better than we do treat our, our, our workers. Um, I have a bill in the assembly right now, there's law already about minimum temperatures that are allowed in schools. But unfortunately, there's no law based on what are the maximum temperatures in school, and my bill addresses that issue. And every year, DOE blocks the bill. And today we're seeing DOE do your job. We have had our frontline workers, our essential workers, showing up every single day preparing 100,000 meals for our families and our students that are in need. DOE, you can do the same. Do your job. This task force costs no money, just time and effort and attention. So I am so glad to be standing here with my partners in government, making sure that we are holding our agencies, our executives, accountable to, for, to, for them to do their jobs because our frontline workers have been doing that and local 372, they matter as well. So thank you. conversations. It's hard for me to believe that if we were talking about black and brown business owners who were helping the city make more money, we wouldn't be having these conversations. But when we talk about treating our people with respect so that you can breathe and work and live in dignity, we have to keep coming out. I'm tired of us always having to come out to these press conferences for basic necessities. So we come here with our colleagues in government, with our dear friends, I see Jacques to Jackie Williams, I know we've been working with, and others, to say to the city, have some humanity. It should be very easy to have a ventilation system. I don't need 
a task force to have common sense. And all that we're saying right now is that people who are working over and over for our communities should be able to live and breathe and have dignity. We think about our schools in the Bronx. We have District 7, District 9 as our main two within our district itself. All the days when people were afraid to go outside, when people were afraid to stand up, it was 372 that was still showing up over and over again. And so it is our responsibility to show up for you. So for School Construction Authority, to the mayor, to all those that are associated with all the pieces that are necessary here. If you can find the resources to build larger buildings, if you can find the resources to put money in the pockets of those who don't have more money, and you can find the common sense to make sure that we can use all the drawings that we have today. We'll, we'll take any questions that anyone may have at this time. The question is, is there any data on how many actually don't have versus, no, there isn't. Uh, we, that's why we're calling on a task force today uh, with SCA, because they actually do the work in the kitchen and we have a local, at East 37, local 1740, their members are ready for and they're able to do the work. Any any other questions? The, the, DOE, the, the DOE asked the councilman Kato's um send them um what he had encountered. They somehow found the money to put a, per, a temporary fix into a school where they put an AC. They didn't take a look at the ventilation, but they put an AC, but that's one school. And we have several different locations. President Francois has been adamant that it cannot just be that one school. We have workers all throughout the city that deserve the same recognition, the same respect, the same dignity in a workplace. Any, any other questions? If, if there are no other questions, what we're going to ask is that everyone come together so we can have a photo by um, James McCray. Hope you guys got ventilation now. Well, the 372 said ventilation.